Who gives a shit about your shirt tail? Woohoo! Oh, yay, you're tall. What did you expect, a midget? No, I'm just glad you're tall. Hey, cousin, good to yeah. see you. Oh, sorry, this is my husband, Johnny. Was that everything? This is it, this is all I have. Now, well, let's get the hell out of here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tired? A little bit. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> they kept giving us these little tiny bottles of liquor on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you're entitled to be a little schnockered. <laughs> <laughs> they did. This time, if you want me to come back, it's up to you. But remember, I won't allow the things you used to do. I feel like going jogging. Oh, man, you got to be nuts, tired as you are. <laughs> <sighs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm really out. You know, Gary, I can't look into your eyes without feeling full of sadness. Oh, yeah? Well, don't be too sure about that. <laughs> You're a real criminal, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
cousin. It's just that I like you a lot. That's all. Don't you dare mess up. Understand? Okay. Brenda, will you always tell me the truth? Better believe it, buddy. How come you're taking a chance on a man that spent half his life in the can? Gary, I've been married four times. First time when I was 15. Couldn't live without the guy, right? After two months, I couldn't live with him. And I guess I've sort of been in prison ever since, you know? In my way. So, get it straight. The reason I want you out is... Well, let's just say I got a real soft spot for you. Okay, Brenda, I think I understand. Yeah. How's Vern? How long has it been since you've seen him? 25 years. Well, he's a lot older, Gary. It's a rush job, Gary. I'll, I'll do it for some. Burn. I feel useless. Well, you can't learn everything immediately. Yes, Mrs. Mann? Burn. I really need those shoes. I just wondered when I could have them. I'll get them for you. Don't you worry. Hi, Sterling. Look at that, man. I haven't seen nothing like that in 12 solid years. Mm. Mama! Shake it! Oh, man. Mm. Give me your shoes. What do you think of my nephew? He's a nice fellow, Ron. Awful horny guy. I didn't always have red hair. It used to be an ash blonde before my divorce. And then it was a little brown. It was just yuck. I settled on red because it suits my temperament. Being a redhead is being me. Well, you hadn't been to the bar lately, have you, Gary? No. <laughs> Let's play the jukebox. You make the selection. Kentucky back in 49, went to Detroit working on assembly line. First year they had me putting wheels on the cattle line. Every day I'd watch them beauties roll by. Why'd you tell Vernon you'd go out with me? That's simple. You need a friend. And I need a new friend. 
Seem to be getting no place with my old friends. Do you normally do this? Just drive around like this? It relaxes me. It don't bother you, me being here? Not the least. Will you go to a motel with me? No. I am here to be your friend. If the other is what you want, you better look someplace else. Well, I'm sorry. I haven't been around girls very much, you know? You can't have it all in five minutes, Gary. You have to earn it, bit by bit. Yeah, well, you know, you've had it real easy, you know? Listen, I work hard. I've worked super hard to have my home and my car and my colored TV. Jesus, I don't want to hear any more of that. Well, you're going to. You want to hit me. Don't you? Can I hug you? Don't rush so, Gary. You got time. You're not going to see me again, are you? Sorry I messed it up. Fern will probably be disappointed in me. I guess you think I gobble like a pig kind of quick. I notice you eat fast. You see, in prison, you get 15 minutes to get your food, sit down, eat it, and get out of there. Otherwise, you don't eat. But you managed. Yeah. Well, now, why don't you take a little more time? Hey, Spencer! 
Gary. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> it's the first time, Gary. It's no big deal. I couldn't hit you right. I, I had to walk it. You walked the seven miles from Provo? Yeah. You been doing that every day? Yeah, I've, I've been trying real hard, Spence. I ain't learned how to fly yet. <laughs> hey, you all right, Gary? You know that? You got the makers of right good stuff in you. I'll tell you what, you stick around after work tonight. I'm gonna make sure you get a ride home. Now, this car is tagged at 795, but uh, I need space, Spence, so I'll move for you for 550. That sounds reasonable, Val. Well, look here, Gary's only taking home 95 a week after taxes. Uh-huh. If I put in the first 50, you carry him for the rest, 25 a week, OK? <laughs> that sounds functional. <laughs> Too many roads, I've been up and down too many nights, days and one more round too many times, done kicked my body down and I don't know if I can get it up to get it on again. Too many ends, rounds and round and round too many times. Now that my old lady's left me, I'm a hell of an attraction to you girls. <laughs> well, thank you. Hey. I know you. How do you know me? I know you. From some other life or some damn thing. Stop kicking your feet. <laughs> I told you not to do that. <laughs> Mama, he's real nice. This little girl could wind up in reform school. Maybe I'm the kind of mother that does that to her children. Oh, hey, I, I was only wanting to talk to you. I just wanted to count all the freckles on you. <laughs> of course, you can't count the freckles on an elf. Go get some beer. I can't. I have to take my kids home. Your girlfriend ain't ready to leave here yet. Nicole, go with him. I'll take your kids over to Sue's. State sent me to school for a week so I learned how to use a power sewing machine. But as soon as I got the hang of it, they put me on another one. <laughs> and your machine screws up when you least expect it. I never let them put me in no shop. You put in time? Half my life. You another loser? Oh, I figure I'm paying off my karma. I heard that word. Is it like reincarnation? Yeah, right. See, after you die, your soul comes right back to Earth. 
It's reborn in a new body. And you're supposed to pay for what you did wrong in your last life. That's the only thing that makes any sense. You have to face yourself. That's the whole point of living. If you don't, your burden's gonna grow. I have thoughts like this all the time. But I never knew you could have a conversation about them. Hey, uh, I think I'm gonna crash for a while. Good night. Good night. just jump in bed with you. I want to make love to you. You know, I had to sleep with a fellow instead of hurting his feelings. I've been married three times. Only I haven't been with a guy in a long time because I don't want to. But you're so beautiful. Fresh and young. Guys, and you want to count? I don't care. You're my guardian angel. I'm guardian angel. <laughs> Listen, my mother was once stranded with my brother and me in the desert. My old man took off and left us in Humboldt, St. Nevada. I was only four. We didn't have any money. We hadn't eaten for days. We were hitchhiking home to Provo. And there were no cars. And then a man comes walking down the road out of nowhere. And he said, here, my wife fixed a lunch, but it's more than I can eat. And Mom said, well, We'd be really grateful. Then we were so hungry, we just started eating. And when I finally looked up to thank that man, he was gone. Right out in the desert. On a long, flat stretch. I didn't know it, but that man was my guardian angel. I lost him. A long time ago. When you came in here tonight, I said to myself, boy, you got your guardian angel back. Is this your address? I wouldn't lie to you. Truly? I'm coming over after work. <laughs> hey, just a little bit too much beer.
I'm probably just not worrying about it. I'll get better. You remember the first time you did it? Vaguely. What do you mean, vaguely? It wasn't that big a deal. I was 11. <laughs> You're a tolerant dog. You're perfect. I heard that one before. No, no, you're an angel. Really, I believe that's so. <sighs> Do you love me? I don't know if I've ever been in love with a guy. It's like I have crushes. You got a crush on me? With you, I feel like I'm in the right place for the first time. <laughs> so, where do you live? Yeah. Down the road. Springville, Spanish Fork, what? Spanish fork. Mm, she got it. Yeah. Like a pickle? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hot dog, please. Uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you love her, Brenda? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure do. Yeah. No, I don't. Well, I think it looks kind of nice. Yeah, well, it's done with a real nice, steady touch, but it looks a lot like you stepped in shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your bathroom? Um, it's back there, turn to your left. I really love that girl, Brenda. You think she might be too old for me? Oh, no, Gary, not at all. I think you're both on the exact same level of intellectual maturity. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm 19, like her, you know. Gary, why don't you grow up? You're 35. <sighs> you're blunt. Yeah, well, damn it, Gary. You come in here with this welfare witch who's living on the government forever. You want my good opinion, Gary? A real space cadet. You're right. Brenda, you're really ignorant. And we're leaving, and you're a disgrace. Oh, Gary. Get in the car, Jeremy. Gary, just a second. Gary. Why'd you paint your Mustang? It's her car, man. What, same year? No, we bought our cars on the same day. Can you see the beauty in that? It's a sign. I love her. All right, Gary. Gary, God bless you. You got yourself a good looking girl.
dogs? Hmm? <sighs> Baby, I never believed that women could be as sweet smelling as you are. You're an angel to babysit for Nicole and me. I'm gonna go phone her right now. Vern, looks like Gary just tried to proposition your granddaughter. I want you to stay away from that child. What? What are you talking about, Vern? I'm just asking her to babysit. Pete says he saw something. Now, I don't know what he saw, Gary, but I don't want to think there's anything out of the way. Get him in! Get over here! I'm here. What did you see me do, man? I didn't see you do nothing, Gary. But the appearance has left no doubt in my mind. Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. But it seems that your interest in Vern's granddaughter don't look right to me. OK, motherfucker, you draw the line there, man. <laughs> you want to fight? Get out back. Rotten, Gary. Hitting a man from behind. Well, get out of here right now, Gary. I'm calling the police. All right, man. Let's go again now. Come on. Jeez. I'm going to call him anyway. You do what you have to do. You're absolutely right, Nicole. I'm the man who got in touch with Gary's parole officer. But let me tell you, he hurt me. My neck is in pain right now. Pete, the guy's been locked up a long time. It takes a while to get used to being really out. Yeah, but he hit me from behind. Gary's dangerous. He needs help. I'm the only one that can help him. That's because I love Gary. Love is the only way to really help a person. Yeah, yeah that's right. Love can bring the spiritual power of God to a situation. But this is a bad situation. Your man is far gone. He wants to kill me. Pete Gallivan, if you press charges, they'll arrest Gary, and then they'll let him out on bail. He'll get you then, even if they lock him up right away. He's more important to me than my life. He's a hell of a lot more important to me than your life. If he don't get you, I will. All right. I'll drop the charges against Gary. Maybe your man needs another chance. But now I want you to kneel with me. I want you to pray. It's for you and Gary. You're both going to need it. Our Father in heaven, please have mercy on Nicole, this young girl and upon Gary, the possible father of her children. God bless them, and please give Gary some control in his life, which is essential to, to his well-being. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. He sent me here to the nut house when I was 11. 
What for? They catch you with your first boyfriend? <laughs> my first boyfriend happened to be my uncle. Uncle Lee. Your uncle? Well, he wasn't really my uncle. He was just a friend of the family. I'll kill him for you. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> he got burnt in Vietnam. <laughs> Nicole, come back here! Psychos in the nut house? Yeah. You think they call up spirits? I believe they can. I think crazy people are very close to the spirits. Yeah. Yeah, they call them forth. Are you the devil? I had a friend one time in reform school named Paul. I held him down while he got raped. Well, see, I ran into him later on in prison, and he was making this ring out of silver. I said, give me that ring, punk. He said, are you the devil? I didn't answer him. I just took his fucking ring. I got married for the second time. My mother was so mad, she dressed me in a black wedding dress. It was short, and it slid up the sides. Nobody in the house took a picture of the bride. Write your name on the back of it. Gary, I don't want to go around knocking on doors. You bring the 50 bucks in, not a six pack. I don't like that Mustang. It gets left to dinner section. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get it straight, partner. With your credit, I'm doing you the favor. What I want is a truck. You, you got a white truck right out here in your lot. I'm very highly interested in that truck. Well, you pay for the Mustang first. That truck is mucho mazuma. Was for seventeen hundred dollars. It's too much truck for you, partner. My uncle Vern will co-sign with me. Your uncle Vern ain't shaped for that kind of credit. Give me a credit app, pal. Oh boy, now is he hot? I don't give a damn. People can run me to get I think that's about two pounds worth. I'll just put it on a scale and see. Honey, I think the kids ate all the peanut butter. Better get some. You know, Bishop Christiansen's son is going to go to Brazil on his mission. Here you go, Vern. Well, it's very nice of you to offer me a case, Gary. How can you afford it? I don't need money for beer. You realize you're violating your parole. You gonna turn me in? I might. If it persists, I might. Gary, 
Terry's thought. It's a bummer. Sorry I'm not used to sex with girls. You're using downers, Gary. I got that headache. Don't hassle me. Well, they don't start what you can't finish. Sometimes when we're um, making love, there's an old nightmare that comes back to me where I feel uh, like I'm in this closed up space. And there's that old uh, terrible smell of oldness comes back and I feel like I am dead. Come inside. I'll mellow you out. We thought I was going to improve. Got me a habit that is sure to get it. Ain't got a habit that is good to live a bit. Every time I try to see you, love you nearly never home. And I wouldn't call it all, but you give me a call. I'm good to you, but you won't get stabbed. Tell me that you love me, but you won't come around. Not bad. I'm good to you, but you won't get stabbed. One hot lady. I know that. I know that. Every time I really think I really got a change. Jenny's darling. It is your birthday and you are all one birthday kiss. <laughs> hmm. Hell. I'll take you up on that. Okay, Gary. You having fun? Hey, man, we want them sunglasses back. That's a birthday present from me to Sterling. I do not want them ripped off. Fuck you. You're messing up the party. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no. No, damn it. Jimmy, stop, Jim. We're going. It's over, Gary. This is fact. I don't like to get whipped. I hate to see it. in front of everybody and yet you're still being real nice to me. Yeah, well, I love you all the way.
God damn it to hell. How you doing, Gary? I want that white truck. <laughs> well, we're not anywhere near it, Gary, till you come in with the money. <laughs> I'll bring in the money. All right. This car, man. This goddamn car. Well, now, uh, hold it. Let's get some time for cables. We'll get a started for you, partner. I love it. I love it, partner. Yeah? Well, why don't you get yourself a little boy? <laughs> oh, no, baby, I hit you. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'll never hit you again, sweetie. Baby, I'm sorry. It always ends the same way. <laughs> no, 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 baby, you gotta forgive me. Sweetheart, please, please forgive me, baby. I'm sorry. I'd like to die. I don't. That's right. You don't. You don't. I've been telling you all day I don't want to go. I need you and the kids. I don't want no state trooper pulling me over because I don't look right, okay? Well, I ain't driving in the car with those guns. Nicole, I found a guy to buy them. Lousy stolen guns. <laughs> Shut up, Jeremy. Right out wasted.
quiet. I'll let you go. She's out of my life. Can I stay here tonight? Come on in. My old lady's back, so call it. I'm gonna hide for a few days, Mom, and I ain't gonna tell you where. I would never tell him nothing. He's awful persistent. Catherine, I want you to take good care of this beer. It's still in property. My gosh. Aren't you afraid? No, I always act like I own the place. What have you got yourself there, Gary? Guns. Guns? Yeah. Oh. I want to leave them here for a little while. Oh, God, Gary. Just for a little while. What do you think of that 44 Magnum? It's nice. They're all nice, you know. I gave Nicole this real sweet little over and under derringer to protect herself. I want you to have this special. You're a woman living alone. Gary, I still got my ex-husband's magnum. That's too much for you. You need a special. Catherine. I, I want you to give this picture of me to Nicole. Where are you going? I'm going to look for Nicole. Cigarettes are for Nicole. I'll give them to her if I see her. You see her, you tell me about it. Sue, so where's she? Sue, so where is she? I've been looking everywhere for her. I looked in the laundromat five times. Where is she? Gary, I don't ever know where my own husband is.
my car. Too bad, partner. Yeah, you're leaving the accessories to the vacuum cleaner. They're gonna get ripped off. Yeah. All right. Damn it, Gary. I'm accepting the Mustang as a down payment. Plus another 400 we're going to promise to bring in tomorrow morning. Plus another 410 days. Oh, Val, Val, you can count on me. Yeah, will you just get the money, Gary? <laughs> Nicole? No, Gary, I still ain't seen her. As far as I'm concerned, she can go to hell. Straight to hell. Gary, I can't believe you'd use words like that for Nicole. I want that special back. You can have it tomorrow when you're sober. If I'm going to use a gun, this little baby right here will take care of it all. All right, man, I'll get it. Stay on the porch, April. Gary! Gary! My mama, she won't take me to the Kmart to get new guitar strings. Get in the truck. April? You can't go. I'll bring her back. Maybe Nicole will be here when we return. Gary! with the heaviest strings, aren't you? I want to stay out all night. Oh, yeah. I'm in orbit, too. Oh, 
Don't go to the bathroom. Lay down on the floor. Put your arms underneath your body. This one's for me. This one's for Nicole. Let's drive a little. Do you believe this guy? Well, what kind of an idiot would do that? Shooting a guy for nothing. I can understand if he has to fight for the money. But, but to take anybody who'd take the cash, then take the kid in the back room, lay him on the floor, and shoot him in the back of the head twice. I mean, he's got to be a psychomaniac. Maybe that fella deserved to die of him. Oh, come on. Get ready to shoot a kid for nothing. You gotta be crazy, man. Val, well, would you like a beer? No, I don't want a beer. I want you to remember that if you don't bring the $400 in by tomorrow, you lose the truck and the Mustang. Fourth time in the last two weeks, you lost half a day. Well, yeah, I know, but I've, my girl's had a really bad case of acute indigestion. I've been cleaning up puke all afternoon. I'm... Go to work. Hey, Spence, you know, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I know it's a real bad time, and I just hope you'll bear with me. Just go to work. Vince, I got a friend that's got some guns to sell on commission. You think I could interest you in a 357 Magnum with a six-inch barrel? Good God, Gary, I don't need a howitzer. Now, please go to work. Yes, sir. Honey, I'm telling you, if a woman don't want to see you, it's no use looking for her. I don't think I can take this. You and Johnny always been real happy. You don't know what this is. Uh-uh. Johnny and me have come very close to getting divorced, Gary. It can be real frightening. You think Nicole went out with some other man? I don't know. I think I'm going to... I'm gonna kill her. Great. You that selfish of a lover? Fuck it. I'm in misery. I got this ulcer starting now.
Put it in the bay, we'll check the thermostat. fixed. You get it all done? Yep, all done. J just put it on my tab. Okay. Hey, take care. Look a little wasted. Get some seed. Yeah, I think I'll crash. all over his hand. Officer, listen. This guy left blood all over my gas station. I caught his license. He's driving a white truck. Bill? It's possible my nephew Gary Gilmore had something to do with this. You better check it out. to you, he always does. Sorry. 
Yeah, right. Can I talk to the chief, please? Yeah, chief, hi, this is Brenda Nickel calling. Could you catch my neighbor, Toby Bath, before he goes off duty, please? Yeah, just, just ask him to stop by Johnny Nichols' house, all right? Thanks a lot. <sighs> Sterling, I want you to take me to the airport. Gary, I ought to bring you to the hospital. Hospitals don't understand ex-convicts with gunshot wounds. I guess not. Go call Brenda for me. How you doing, Gary? Brenda, I had this dumb accident. Uh, I'll explain it to you later. I got shot in the hand. Uh, it's hurting real bad, and... Um... Can you come to me? Yeah, of course I'll come. Um, I'll bring some codeine and some bandages now. You just gotta tell me where you are, Gary. Okay. Right. Either I'll be coming or Johnny will. Okay, honey. Toby, um, Sterling's got a wife and a kid. You can't pick up Gary there. You'll have to shoot out. All right, let's go down to police headquarters and maybe they can figure something out. Brenda, in the meantime, will you stall Gary? Say anything. How long has Johnny been gone? He must be having some trouble with all those weird roads in Pleasant Grove, Gary. He's always getting lost there. Don't worry, he'll find you. If Johnny's not here in five minutes, I'm leaving. Something? Five minutes. Be careful, Gary. Yeah. Suspect proceeding west on 900 east. Just past 1150 south. All cars copy. Stop your vehicle immediately. Stop your truck immediately. Put your hands up. Put your hands up so we can see them. Hands up in the air. Up high. Right now. Put them up. Put your hands up all the way up. Now, put both hands out the left-hand side of the truck. 
Both hands outside right now. Unlatch the door. Open the door and get out. Turn around. Put your hands up. Put your hands up so we can see them. I need you to get them. Now step away from the truck. Step away from the truck. Lay down in the street. Lay down immediately in the street. Face down in the street. Now. All the way down. All the way down on your stomach. Face down in that street. All the way down. Now stay where you're at. Don't move. Stay where you're at. Mr. Gilmore, you're under arrest for criminal homicide. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you are being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before questioning, if you wish. You can decide at any time Gary, you commit a murder on Monday. You commit a murder on Tuesday. I wasn't about to wait till Wednesday rolled around. I called them. Well, don't lose no sleep over it. You just go soak your head, OK? What about your mother, Gary? What do you want me to tell her? You tell her what you're going to tell her. You will anyway, you snitch. Fuck you. I'm Lieutenant Nielsen. I don't want to see him. He'll just mess me up. Well, it's your decision. Nicole, you want a beer? I'll tell him. Hold up. Maybe I will. Did you do it? Nicole, don't ask me that. Maybe I wrote you a letter. They'll give it to you on the way out. I don't know what I feel. 
feel. Nothing in my experience prepared me for the kind of open, honest love you gave me. I'm so used to hostility, deceit, and pettiness, evil, and hatred. These things are my natural habitat. They have shaped me. I look at the world through eyes that suspect, doubt, fear, hate, cheat, all selfish and vain. I truly belong in a place this dank and dirty. All his shit. Gary writes a lot. Maybe I don't read every word. You scratch through. No. I read them. Every night. The yes, answer? Every night. You're crazy. I got your letter today where you wrote that you fucked a guy twice. Twice. I can't stand the thought of some man holding your naked body. You gotta be all mine, baby. I'm locked up. I can't get it. Why can't you go without two? Nicole, I have to keep thinking of the man who'd known you, used you, and hurt you. I try to understand as well as I can. I tell myself that you get by on very little money, and you raise your kids to the very best of your ability. You are true and sincere, and I realize that I love you utterly. I can't see you anymore. You gotta go. You're a flick. That old man of yours is gonna get nothing but lead poison. Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Is there anything the defendant would like to say to the jury? Well, I'm glad to see that the jury is finally looking at me. No, I have nothing to say. Since the verdict of the jury is death, do you have an election as to the mode of death? I prefer to be shot. Very well. That will be the order. You're not gonna find this like the county jail. Big boy, there ain't nothing you can tell me about state prisons. I've been there before.
here to see Gary Gilmore. Glad you came. Well, you invited me, didn't you? Yeah, but you weren't going to come, were you? No, but I came. I couldn't resist looking a stupid man right in the face. Maybe I was stupid. Yeah, you don't believe it. I might. I mean, after all, you gave me a chance and I blew it. I, I want to tell you, I appreciate that chance. Now, we don't want to talk as if we're friends, because we may not be. I don't like what you did at all. It was mean and dirty. I'm a bad man, I guess. <laughs> You're bragging. What would you say if I told you I deserve to die? I'd say you were a damn fool. Don't pay any attention to what I say. Pay attention to what I do. Mr. Gilmore has asked me to act as his new attorney. My name is Dennis Boaz. Mr. Boaz, you may proceed. Mr. Gilmore asks that the motion for appeal filed by his former attorney be set aside and that he be allowed to be executed. Gary Gilmore, are you in fact at this moment ready to accept execution? Not at this moment. But I am ready to accept it next Monday morning at 8 a.m. That's when it was set. And that's when I'm ready to accept it. of the Utah Supreme Court to lift the stay. It brings him peace. Well, Mr. Boaz, why do you think Gary Gilmore committed the crime in the first place? Let me answer that as if I were a right winger, which I am not. The prison system is a completely regimented, controlled way of life. Just check it out. For more than a dozen years, Gary was told when to go to bed, when to get up, and when to eat. That's totally contradictory with our capitalist lifestyle. Then one day, they put Gary out on the street, and they say, here, today is magic. Now you're a capitalist. Go out and do it on your own. Find a job, get up in the morning, get to work on time, manage your money, do everything we taught you not to do while in prison. Guaranteed to fail. Karma's got a lot to pay for if you commit suicide. I'm not asking you to. But you want me to. I want us to be together. Uh, I love you more than God. If I do, what about my kids? thinking about my kids. Maybe if you have to, I know you'll stay alive and take care of them. Only once I'm gone, I don't know what I'm going to do if you're with another man. I wish we were dead together. The 
Gary seemed like his self when you saw him today? He told me he just assumed he shot right now. Yeah? What did you say back? I said maybe he should. Oh, you really got a sense of humor, girl. Listen, get one thing straight. Gary deserves the death penalty. You don't understand him. You try understanding them poor women that has to raise their kids without a father while you're running up every cockeyed day to see the killer. I don't want to hear a goddamn thing you got to say. Raise your arms. Lift your foot. Lift your other foot. and ten downers. Oh, that's enough. Remember when I asked you if you was the devil? Yeah. Are you? The devil doesn't feel any love. I may be further away from God than I am from the devil. I know evil very intimately. resent my leaving this life. If I could spare you all any pain, I surely would. I love you all. Please love my kids always as they are part of the family. Never hide truth from them. Try not to grieve for me or resent Gary. I love him. How did you get this stuff? Is he conscious? Get back. Yeah. can't put Nicole in a mental hospital. If you don't sign, we have to get a court order saying she's incompetent and suicidal. It's a lot of awful publicity. Mrs. Baker, it's just not safe to let her out. Gary Gilmore will talk her into suicide again. Dr. Brooks? 
Dr. Brooks wanted an OR. Dr. Brooks, Dr. Brooks wanted an OR. I don't want him ever to get near my daughter. There won't be any more contact visits. I'm sorry. Sit here, please. You can use this telephone to talk to him. It's temporary while he's over here at the prison hospital. Gary, will you pick up the telephone, please? Well, we didn't end very good, did we? I don't think I'm very mad anymore. Glad to hear that. I need you. Whatever for, Gary? I want you to act as my representative. Take care of things. I'm a shoemaker, Gary. I don't think I can handle something as big as this. Burr. With your business ability and my practical sense, who can stop us? Well, let's shake on it. You know how to do that through class. Hey, Gary, you old shithead. Looks like you're gonna pull through, huh? You ain't changed, none. You still mad at me? Well, I don't give a damn. Glad you're alive. Only I'm wondering, Gary, how come you didn't take enough pills to do the job? What are you talking about? Well, Gary, come on. You know a whole lot about drugs. You know how much to take. I bet you, you just wanted to stay around long enough to see whether Nicole was dead or maybe just damaged in her brain some. Gary, if she has brain damage, then nobody else is gonna want her, right? You're a wretched woman. And you're a scum-sucking pig. And you have a vile and dirty mouth. <laughs> Miss Baker is not going to hear Gilmore's name any more than necessary. Make it clear, no aid or patient here is to mention. That may be impossible. She has to be allowed to see her relatives. Well, warn them. She's under our supervision now. As far as I'm concerned, Gilmore is out of her life. Locally, Pastor Conker stated, the Old Testament idea of an eye for an eye was replaced by the New Testament concepts of love and rehabilitation. Pastor Conferr stated Gilmore doesn't want to be rehabilitated. He also pointed out that such a machine is simply the case of kept alive by machines in the hospital who wants the plug full. And because of the many questions about Gary Gilmore's sanity, Governor Rampton has asked the Utah Board of Pardons to review Gilmore's death sentence at their next meeting. That means the execution cannot take place as scheduled. And this morning, Provo County Attorney Noel Wooten stated, I've done my job. I asked for it. Lou, there is death no death death. way that this story can it. miss. Look, if we get Gilmore's job, okay, but no Nicole, we do a scenario of a guy who comes out of prison, struggles with old con habits before killing a man. On the other hand, if we can get the girl but we can't sign Gilmore, then we focus the whole thing completely on Nicole. I mean, here's a study of an adolescent saddled with children who falls in love with a criminal. I am sure of the potentialities. And I want the network to back me in a real way. I want to be able to get in there and deal for this property. Everybody's here. The stamp is on the meat. I'm prepared to offer you a total of $75,000 for all rights, of which Nicole will get a third. In effect, I'm offering Gary $50,000. This is a firm offer, Mr. D'Amico. This is not a bargaining stance. These are the real prices that are available. Other producers eventually may tell you that the property may be worth $10 million. Watch them only offer a small amount now. The likelihood is the big piece will never be seen. Mr. Suskind called me from New York. He said the difference between him and you is the difference between a high school football team and the Dallas Cowboys. 
Mr. Suskind is right. He is equal to the Dallas Cowboys, and in his eyes, they may be just a high school football team. But I'm here, Mr. D'Amico, all suited up, ready to play. Where are the Dallas Cowboys? They're not even in the stadium. I'm listening. Mr. Gilmore, your uncle has asked me to serve as your lawyer, but I can't represent this case by myself. There could be a conflict of interest. Suppose you change your mind and want to appeal. Then the movie and book rights to your life story will be worth less when Mr. Samuels gets around to selling them. I don't want to ask myself whether your death will be more profitable to me than your life. So I've asked Mr. Stanger here to represent you on your court appearances. Oh, uh, okay, let me talk to Samuels. Lord Smith. Lord Smith. Report to the visiting Who's going to play me in the movie? Well, who'd you have in mind? Well, there was this guy in, uh, in that movie, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. That's Warren Oates. Yeah, Warren Oates. Yeah. I like him. I want him to play me. Put it in the contract. Warren Oates might not be available. I might not want Warren Oates. You're getting into my part of the business. I have to say no. Larry, we both know Warren Oates ain't handsome enough to play me. All right. Who do you really want? Gary Cooper. I was named after him. <laughs> Are you a Hollywood producer? How much is Gilmore being paid? Who do you represent? Well, has Gilmore spoken to a girlfriend yet? How do you feel? Can't you call here? Have you spoken to Gilmore's brother? Gilmore's family is appealing to Sam. Why you paid for the rights, Sam? Who do you represent, Sam? I was Dennis Bell's buyer. I want to apologize for driving you around in a Rolls Royce. It's my boss's. I don't care about the accommodations. I just want to get to the prison and see my brother. It's been four years. Yeah, well, you will. I succeeded in getting an unrestricted visit. There won't be a glass window between you. Michael, you realize Gary's execution is going to have fatal results for a lot of men on death row. Everywhere. Guard says Canfield brought you out here in a Rolls Royce. It's not important. Those liberals are idiots, Michael. I might have to help them. Who do you think the ACLU is? A bunch of holy men. They're using you so they can get to me, so they can make headlines in New York. That's how they make their money. Gary, they won't be doing it. I will. Do you really appeal? Against my wishes? Violate my privacy? I save it. I know you too well. Every time you broke into a house when you were a kid, you spoiled it for the people who live there. You violated their privacy. You're an incredibly selfish human being. Watch it, kiddo. No. I want to speak. I've always been too frightened of you to say anything, but face it, brother. I may appeal your execution. Maybe I believe your redemption can only be found by your choosing to live. Very well put, Michael. But you don't have to live here. And I do. I've been here so long, there's nothing left in me. When they first sent me to the juvenile home, two boys held me down and raped me. Right at the bucket. Two years later, I was the one holding down the new kids. On the inside of every wolf, there's a scared little punk looking for revenge. See?
ready. We're live to New York. And today, in Washington, D.C., the ACLU filed the motion to appeal the execution of Gary Gilmore. Locally, the Board of Pardons tomorrow will review Gilmore's death sentence. Imagine that cheap kill again. Well, let's go. Gary Gilmore. We of the Board of Pardons are meeting here at the request of the governor to review your death sentence. Do you have a statement you'd like to make? I accepted the sentence that was given to me. I've accepted sentences all my life. I didn't know I had any choice in the matter. And everybody wanted to jump up and argue with me about it. Seems that the people of the state of Utah want to have the death penalty, but they don't want any executions. When it became a reality, well, they started backing off on it. Well, I took them literal and serious when they sentenced me to death. Just like they'd sentenced me to 10 years or 30 days in the county jail or something. I thought you were supposed to take them serious. I know it was a joke. In my opinion, you're all acting like a bunch of moral cowards. Mr. Gilmore, in spite of what you might think of us, we on the Board of Pardons here are not cowards. We will make this decision on the statutes of the state of Utah and not your desires. This morning, the Supreme Court ruled in your favor. They said you made an intelligent waiver of your rights. Well, I could have told you the Supreme Court knows I'm intelligent. It's the people of Utah that don't. Now, the execution is set for the 17th of January. Good. It doesn't seem to affect your mood. Someday you guys are going to realize I'm serious. Oh, we do, Gary. Okay, let's get on with Samuel's questions. Samuel's is rough today, I warn you. For instance, here's the first one. You speak of this cold, murderous rage you felt on each of the nights of the killings. Samuels wants to know if that rage couldn't have been vented in sex. I don't answer questions that pertain to sex. I think they're cheap. You seem to find it easier to talk about murder than sex. That's your judgment. Next question. What are some of the evil acts you could not perform? Well, that's easy. I don't think I could torture anybody. Isn't forcing somebody to lie down on the ground and shooting them in the back of the head torture? It's very short torture. How can any crime be worse than taking a life? Well, you could alter somebody. You could maim them, blind them, fuck them up so bad the rest of their lives would be a misery. Now, to me, that's a lot worse than killing. I mean, if you kill somebody, you might be assuming their karmic debts and thereby relieve them of the burden. So there are crimes you deem worse than murder? <laughs> I mean, Jesus, look what some governments do to their people. I'm talking about the forms of brainwash, like all the forms of behavior modification, like uh, the irreversible forms. Like uh, lobotomies and prolexin, I mean, uh, you don't interfere with people's fate, is what I say. Didn't you interfere with Jensen's and Bushnell's lives? Yeah. You think you had any right to do that? No. Did Jensen resist, or did he show fear? No, he did not resist. He did not show undue fear. In fact, I was struck by his kind and friendly, smiling face. Next question. Was the second murder any easier than the first? I would say it was a little more certain that Mr. Bushnell was going to die. Why? Because it was already a fact that Mr. Jenkins had died. Jensen, Gary, not Jenkins. Damn. I hate getting his name wrong like that, man. Damn. <laughs> Gary, paperboy time. Thank you. Jimmy Carter. Lady Ford. Body of Mount Zetun lying in state. Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger. And you know who else is right here on this page? Gary Gilmore. No question about it. I'm by now the best known convict of the United States. Father, I'd so much rather be known for my humanitarianism and my intellect. Like Jimmy Carter. 
Gary, <laughs> whatever's fair. <laughs> Are you that dumb that you're going to go to your grave not forgiving me for what I did? I'll forgive you, yeah. I guess. I don't know. We've got different codes of ethics, after all. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like I ought to say goodbye. I guess you know that I'm going to the hospital from here. They're operating on me early this evening. Yeah, I heard. They didn't say what for. It's my insides. They just got to cut out a couple of knots. God, Brenda, you sure are a mess. <laughs> Said a blessing for us too. He says, "See, si, see, si, tutti frutti, tutti frutti." <laughs> Every day I'd watch them years go by, and sometimes I'd hang my head and cry. There's always one and be one that was long and blind. One day I devised myself a plan that would be the end of most any man. I'd sneak it out of there and run for it if I had. Waived his right to appeal. That should remove any doubt in the mind of the court. 
Now, the state asks that Ms. Canfield's request for a stay be denied. It is true. Mr. Gilmore did say, I do not want to appeal. But that does not release the state of Utah from undertaking a mandatory review of this case. Right now, we don't know whether the Utah death penalty statute is or is not in contravention to the U.S. Constitution, since it hasn't been examined by the U.S. Supreme Court. In addition, public funds are being spent for the purpose of executing Gary Gilmore, unlawfully spent. The Utah death penalty statute has not been held unconstitutional by any court. And if I may, Your Honor, Ms. Canfield is attempting to stop an execution, not the wrongful expenditures of taxpayers' funds. Thank you, Mr. Dorius. Say, Al, Al. Al, the warden wants us to proceed as though the execution is on. So, everyone, uh, you all have to say goodbye to Gary Gilmore now. Have you heard from Denver? No, there's no word, but if they do have a turn rid of, we don't want to be caught sitting on our hands. Okay. You've been really hey, great, do you know that? What am I supposed to say? So long, Gary. So long, Gary. Good luck. See you. See You're all right, man. Really. Bob? Come on. Uncle Burr. They overturned Ritter. It's on. It's on. <laughs> hey, what? it's on. It's on? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, you guys. Get up. It's on. It's on. It's on. All right, come on. It's on. What's that? Leave it on, please. You sure you want me to leave this on? Yes.
Stand over here. Not too tight, son of a bitch. you right out of that chair. Haven't been found guilty of the crime of criminal homicide, murder in the first degree by a jury of his peers and a defendant having been given the election to determine the mode of death as provided in section 77-36-16 of the Utah Code annotated 1953 as amended and he having elected to be put to death by shooting. The warden of the Utah State Prison is hereby ordered to execute said judgment of death on the 17th day of January, 1977. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Depart, O Christian soul, out of this sinful world. In the name of God the Father Almighty, who from nothing created thee. In the name of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who suffered and died on the cross for thee. In the name of God the Holy Spirit, who sanctified thee. Let peace be your abode. We send you forth with a blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dominus will best come. Et cum spirit to do all.
everybody leave now. I'm riding the big blue ball. I never did dream I would fall. But even the day that I do, I'll jump off and smile. We don't even look where we are. They tell us we're circling the star. Well, I'll take their word, for I don't know. But I'm busy, so maybe. Come on. That's so.